good morning students and welcome to the new session today we have our first online class of biology we start with the chapter the fla in this chapter we are going to deal with what is the basic structure of a bisexual fla functions of various parts of the fla along with this a few terminologies will be discussed So to start with what is a flower the flower is the most attractive brightly colored part of the mature plant the flower is a highly modified shoot which is meant for sexual reproduction which later on forms fruits and seeds each flower rests on a cylindrical stalk called as pedicel This pedicel on its upper tip has a flat conical or a dome shaped part called thalamus on the thalamus it is that all the parts of the flower arise in rings or also called as whorls so all the floral structures of a flower arise in four floral whorls that is calyx corolla androecium and gynoecium if all the four whorls of a flower are present a flower is regarded to be as a complete flower and if in a flower any one whorl is missing then it is regarded to be as a incomplete flower now if we see all the four whorls out of these calyx and corolla are just the helpers during reproduction so they are called as non essential parts of a flower whereas if we see androecium and gynoecium they are directly involved in sexual reproduction so they are called as essential parts of a flower now all the flowers may not have a pedicel such flowers are called as sessile flowers and those which were having a pedicel are called as pedicellate flowers now to start explaining all the basic whorls of the flower the outermost whorl which is called as calyx is a collection of green leaf like structures which are called as sepals these sepals they protect the flower in the bud stage and as they are green in color they contain chlorophyll so they are also helping in synthesis of food inner to the calyx is the corolla corolla is the most brightest part of the flower it consists of leaf like structures called petals if <clears throat> we talk about day blooming flowers we see bright colored petals are there but if we talk about night blooming flowers strongly scented and whitish petals are present in it so these petals are actually helpers of the flower for attracting the insects or other animals during pollination inner to the corolla is the androecium androecium is a collection of the male reproductive organs which are called as stamens each stamen has two parts filament and anther filament is a long stalk it supports at the tip the anthers and each anther has two lobes the two lobes are containing two chambers each in it these chambers are also called as pollen sacs which are containing the male reproductive cells called pollen grains these pollen grains later on develop the male reproductive nuclei in it inner to the androecium is the gynoecium the female reproductive part gynoecium is a collection of carpels in a flower there may be one carpel or more carpels 
each carpel is actually composed of three parts stigma style and ovary this carpel is a flask shaped structure whose base the ovary is oval in shape which is containing chambers in it and the chamber is filled with the oval shaped egg like structures called ovules these ovules they contain an egg cell at the upper end of the ovary is a long stalk which is called as the style and the tip of the style is a swollen platform which is sticky in nature which is called as stigma so all these parts of the flower they are actually making the flower beautiful and helping the flower to perform its basic structure of reproduction now if we see that in a flower the the varieties of flowers which are present around us have all the basic parts but they show still show variations starting with if we talk about sepals if the sepals are fused together the condition of the flower is called as gamosepalous and if the sepals are free from each other they would be called as polysepalous similarly if the petals are fused to form a cup they are called as gamopetalous and when the petals are free from each other they would be called as polypetalous but if we talk about some flowers they don't show the differentiation between the sepals and petals such flowers they are called as the perianth flowers the the perianth condition is where the sepals and petals they are of the same colors and these structures are now not called as sepal or petal they are called as tepals if the tepals are green in color they are called as sepaloid and if the petals are brightly colored tepals are brightly colored they are called as petaloid as the flower is helping in reproduction it has to undergo the phenomena of pollination also so it needs to attract the insects to visit it so some flowers at the base of the petals there are special glandular cells which are called as nectaries these nectaries are always secreting nectar similarly there are some flowers where there is an additional whorl around the petals and that is called as the corona because they are similar in color as that of the petals so students if you see these are the basic features of a flower now a few questions will also be given to you as assignment which you will be doing in your previous years copies or if you do not have those please add special sheets in a file which would be checked and you'll be adding them as a folder so thank you enjoy the new session